AQA A level physics. This is my sixth electricity video, and this is about EMF and internal resistance. So, this is what the specification says. Not very much. So, uh, let's dive in. Consider this. Consider this circuit. What will be the voltage across the 9 ohm resistor when the switch is open? Uh, what will it be when the switch is closed? So have a little think. What's, what's going to be the voltage across that 9 ohm resistor? Well, if the switch is open, then there's no current. And if there's no current, there'll be no voltage across that resistor. So the answer is zero. If the switch is closed, then what we have is a, a potential divider. And the 9 ohm resistor will get 9 volts and the 1 ohm resistor will get 1 volt. So as far as the 9 ohm resistor is concerned, we're losing a volt because of that small resistance. Now, what is that small resistance? Well, it's the resistance of the power supply. On most questions, you'll see the phrase a power supply of negligible internal resistance but sometimes you won't. And that question will be about EMF and internal resistance. So we need to understand it. Let's define a few terms then. So big R is the resistance of the external circuit as it always has been. Little r is the resistance of the power supply. You'll notice very often it's drawn in this um, dotted line box so you've got the cell and the internal resistance next to each other. Sometimes it isn't. Uh, this big squiggly E is the EMF of the power supply. And then V is the terminal PD. So the voltage across the external circuit is big V and it's called the terminal PD. It's the, the voltage, if you put a voltmeter across the terminals of the power supply, the terminal PD. So what is the EMF? Well, it's the voltage uh, across a power supply when there's no current. Uh, the best definition of the EMF is this. Now, remember that a volt is a joule per coulomb. Well, the EMF is the joules per coulomb that go from chemical to electrical. The EMF is the chemical to electrical energy transferred by the cell per coulomb of charge that flows through it. Hence the equation that was in the uh, specification. Why they're using big E here for energy transferred and not W, I, I find a little annoying and inconsistent. But anyway, the EMF is electrical energy, uh, no, chemical energy to electrical energy per coulomb. The terminal PD is electrical energy to other things like heat and light per coulomb in the external circuit. So remember that if you're asked to give a definition of the EMF, I think that's probably the best one. In fact, it is the proper one. OK, so the EMF uh, is the terminal PD plus I've called it little v, the lost volts. In, in the example that we did earlier, 10 equals 9 plus 1. OK, we're losing a volt. So little v, the lost volts. So big V is IR, as it always has been, V equals IR. And then little v is I times little r, where little r is the internal resistance of the power supply of the cell. And if we bring that out, we get the equation that's in the specification. OK, big E equals I into R plus little r. Have a go at this question. Have a read it for yourself. Have a go. I'll show you the answer in a couple of seconds. Three, two, one. There you go. Here's another question, a bit of practice. So there's a, a car battery which is used to get your starter motor going. There's a double A battery. Uh, and the thing is, if you've got eight double A batteries in series, do you reckon you could start your car with it? 
Well, have a read, have a go at the question. I'll show you the answer in three, two, one. There you go. Okay, so the car battery can give us 120 amps. That's the biggest current it can give. It's called the, the short circuit current. If you just connected a wire, you know, from one terminal to the other, then you get 120 amps. Whereas the arrangement of AA batteries would only give you three amps because there'd be eight of them in series. So the basically you've got an internal resistance of four ohms, haven't you? OK, so you'd only get three amps. This is uh, an experiment you should be familiar with. It's a, a required practical, one of the practical assessments. And it's basically what we do is we change the external resistance and we measure the terminal PD and we measure the current. OK, uh, and then you plot a graph. Now, the important thing here is that the more current we draw, the more current that comes from the cell, the more voltage we lose. OK, the more current we draw, the more voltage we lose. So when we make the external resistance smaller, the current gets bigger and big V, the terminal PD, will get smaller. And when we plot our graph. OK, so we plot our results. We have terminal PD V on the Y axis and we have the current I on the X axis. Can we use this graph to get the EMF and the internal resistance? Well, yes, we can. How do you do that? Well, consider the equation that the EMF is V plus I little r. Now, if we arrange that equation, uh, V is minus I little r plus EMF and that equation is of the form y equals mx plus c y is whatever we put on the y-axis in this case the terminal pd x is what we put on the x-axis in this case the current so the gradient m is minus r and the intercept little c is the emf so from this graph, the gradient is equal to the internal resistance, forget the minus, and the intercept on the y-axis is the EMF. So this should be dead easy now. Here's a graph from that kind of experiment, terminal PD against current. What is the EMF and internal resistance of this power supply and I'll show you the answer in three, two, one. There you go.